केजरीवाल स्पीक्स आउट इन कोर्ट कॉज लेकर केस अ पोलिटिकल कंस्पिरसी एल जी कह रही सरकार जेल से नहीं चलेगी मिसेस केजरीवाल क्राइस फाउल आपके सीएम को बहुत तंग किया जा रहा है बहुत परेशान किया जा रहा है जनता जवाब दे केजरीवाल फाइट बैक द टॉप फोकस ऑन सिक्स पी एम प्राइम Good evening. You're watching 6 p.m. Prime here on India Today. I'm Akshita Nandakopal, and we'll be getting you all the highlights of what played out in the Rouse Avenue Court in the National Capital when Arvind Kejriwal was presented there by the Enforcement Directorate. He decided not to let his counsel speak, but instead chose to fight his own battle, speaking in the courtroom and putting up a detailed defence. So, what's happening in Delhi? What's happening with Kejriwal will be our focus on 6 p.m. Prime as part of the Indian Political League. But yes, we're also getting you the latest from the world of sports with the Indian Premier League that's underway. Nikhil Nas will be getting you those updates in just a bit. Nikhil, good evening. What do you have in store for our viewers today? Well, I'll tell you what, Akshita. I know in your Indian Political League, the discourse is dominated by that one question: Will it be char so far for the BJP? But even on this uh, particular parameter, I must tell you that the Indian Premier League is slightly ahead because what we got to see last evening was path so far in a match. We'll give you all the details that's coming your way at 6:40 p.m. Interesting, really, Nikhil. In the last two days, I must say, I found many, many similarities between politics and cricket in the country, and we'll perhaps see more of that over the next one hour. As I'll be getting you all from the world of politics, and Nikhil will be getting you everything you need to know from the Indian Premier League. Let's bring our focus back to the Indian Political League now, beginning with the headlines. Maharashtra seat war splits Aghadi camp Sharad Pawar miffed at Uddhav Sena's candidate list Congress asks why Uddhav revealed candidates Fadnavis mocks Aghadi seat fight Govinda's big poll plunge the actor joins Shiv Sena likely to be fielded from Mumbai Northwest seat against Uddhav Sena's Amol Kirtikar this is his return to politics after a stint with the Congress earlier More trouble for Congress Neta Supriya Shrine. The Delhi police to probe Supriya's sexist post on Kangana Ranaut. Delhi LG seeks detailed report on who put up the post on Supriya Shrine's account. <music> Prime Minister Modi hits out at Congress. Lashing out, in fact, uh, over a letter written by lawyers and in judicial integrity, Prime Minister Modi confers with them, says bullying others is vintage Congress culture. <music> India hits back at the United States on their remarks in Kejriwal. Arrest calls U.S. remarks unwarranted and says India is a robust, independent institution and America must respect our sovereignty. And ticket turmoil grips Karnataka Congress after Kolar rebellion in Chikkabalapura. Deputy Chief Minister Shiv Kumar assures no one will resign. CM Sidramaya meets Kolar Netas. Now in court today, we saw some very very interesting scenes playing out as Arvind Kejriwal is produced by the Enforcement Directorate. But this time, it wasn't just limited to a legal fight. You had Arvind Kejriwal putting up a spirited defence in court, speaking despite multiple objections by the Enforcement Directorate and fighting his own case, saying that all of the allegations against him are politically motivated, saying that people, the other accused who've named him, were forced. to go ahead and take his name and he says the ultimate goal is to ensure the destruction of the arm army party that the party itself is deemed as corrupt and removed completely from the political scene in india this is what arvind kejriwal said in court but it didn't mean any sort of relief for him when it came down to the arguments the court once again extended his ed custody let's round up for you all the updates in our report first 
a day in court. The Chief Minister of Delhi presented his case in person while agreeing to the Enforcement Directorate's request for remand. The CM aimed to mount a strong defence, accusing the investigating agency of unjustly targeting him without solid evidence and trying to undermine his Ahmadmi party. He labelled the liquor policy case as a politically motivated scheme. The prosecution dismissed the arrested leader's allegations, requesting his custody to question him alongside other suspects in the Delhi liquor policy case. The PMLA court granted the ED's request, extending his custody by four days. The application for the police remand was written in the grounds. It was legally sustainable. The court requested that Kejriwal Ji request the court to say something about the court, which the court allowed it. और उन्होंने बताया डिटेल में कि मेरे खिलाफ क्या एविडेंस है और कोई एविडेंस नहीं है गवाह का बयान है या जैसे भी है उसके बाद आखिर में उन्होंने कहा कि मैं पुलिस रिमांड को ऐसा चपोज नहीं करता हूं और जितना भी आप ये चाहें मेरे को कस्टडी में रख सकते हैं मैं पूरा कॉपरेट करूंगा। Meanwhile, the Delhi High Court dismissed a PIL seeking Kejriwal's removal as Delhi Chief Minister following his arrest. The bench refrained from commenting on the merits of the issue, which it noted were beyond the scope of judicial interference. With Munish Pandey and Srishti Oja in Delhi, Bureau Report, India Today. So no relief for Arvind K. Jirwal. He'll remain in ED custody for the next few days, right up until April 1st, when again he will be produced in court. The Enforcement Directorate has referred to him as the kingpin in this case, in Liquor Gate. Let's get you now Aap's response and how the Delhi government chose to react after Arvind Kejriwal's ED remand was extended. Then Arvind Ji said, his purpose is clean. The ED purpose is clean. They wanted me to be able to get me to get me. In section 50, there are three statements. Three are equal. How can you give one statement to one statement? Each statement carries equal gravity. क्या जांच की गई है और इनमें से एक सही है बाकी गलत है इस निर्णय पे ईडी कैसे पहुंची इस निर्णय पे कोर्ट कैसे पहुंचेगा कि अगर तीन स्टेटमेंट सेक्शन 50 में ईडी ने एक ही आदमी से ली है वो अलग अलग हैं तो एक ईडी को उठा ले उस स्टेटमेंट को और वो कोर्ट में दे दे कि साहब ये स्टेटमेंट सही है क्योंकि ये अरविंद केजरीवाल के खिलाफ है ये दो स्टेटमेंट अरविंद जी के साथ है इसलिए खारिज है इसकी जांच कोर्ट कब करेगा कैसे करेगा अरविंद जी ने ये सवाल कोर्ट के सामने रखे so yesterday you had Sunita Kejriwal, Arvind Kejriwal's wife, saying that Kejriwal would make a big disclosure in court today. What really was that disclosure? Let's get you some of the highlights of what Kejriwal said in the courtroom today before the judge. Despite objections from the enforcement directorate, Kejriwal read out details of the case, saying, here's why I believe this is nothing but a witch hunt. He says, my name has surfaced four times, referring to accused naming him. And he said that all of these came up only because the accused were forced to go ahead and take my name and then they were provided some relief or the other by agencies. He's also said no court has found me guilty, highlighting the fact that there's been no charge sheet even filed so far against Arvind Kejriwal. So Kejriwal is saying at this point that there are no allegations against me that have been been proven and thereby is questioning whether there were sufficient grounds to go ahead and take him into custody. He's questioned, saying, were there really sufficient grounds to arrest me? Now, here's where it also got rather interesting. Arvind Kejriwal brought a whole electoral bond twist in his argument, saying that actually, if you look at the money trail from the accused, it's linked to the BJP. How is that? Arvind Kejriwal has highlighted how in the details of the electoral bonds that have come out, the accused gave 55 crore bonds to the BJP. He's referring to Aurobindo Pharma. Aurobindo Pharma gave 55 crore electoral bonds to the BJP and that's clear. Now, Arvind Kejriwal is saying that came from the accused just to ensure that they can get away scot-free in this particular case. And he's also said that the accused were forced to name me, highlighting two to three accused, including Magunta Srinivas Luredi, saying that the first two statements, three statements, he never named me. The moment he named me, he was immediately granted bail and allowed to walk out. And many other accused, according to him, have turned approver only because they were given uh, the reprieve 
after naming him, after naming Arvind Kejriwal. So he's saying it was a motivated attack against me with a clear intention of putting me behind bars. He's also saying that there's a smoke screen that's been created, that the Aam Aadmi Party is corrupt. The ED's mission was clearly to arrest me, which I just told you about. He's also said, I'm ready to face remand, but he's saying my ultimate goal is to expose and prove what the Enforcement Directorate is doing, even in the courtroom when speaking to the reporters who repeatedly asked him uh, about uh, you know, how he's running the government, how he's remaining the chief minister. He only stuck to this being a political conspiracy. And remember, on the line of the jail Sarkar model, the Delhi High Court today refused to intervene, saying very clearly this is a decision taken by the executive. The judiciary cannot intervene in this matter. So that was some reprieve, at least, that came in for Arvind Kejriwal and Co. Let me bring in our reporters on this broadcast. Shreya Chatterjee, who's tracking the agency, who tracks the ED for us closely, is joining us on this broadcast. We have Kanu Sarda, our legal reporter, also with us. Kanu, to you first. Explain to us the scenes that played out in the Rouse Avenue court. You know, we've seen this before, of leaders choosing the courtroom to speak out, to kind of put their defense out there as well. Arvind Kejriwal has chosen to do that at this very stage, the second appearance in court. Yes, Akshita, very interesting scenes happened in the Rouse Avenue court today when the special judge, uh, Kaviri Baveja, who was heading the court, uh, was uh, Arvind Kejriwal sought uh, permission from the judge that he wanted to speak for five minutes and judge granted so, but judge warned him that, you know, uh, he she will only give five minutes and not more than that and not make a political speech over here. Uh, Arvind Kejriwal in his defense, uh, you know, rather, you know, uh, not giving lawyers his uh, defense, uh, took himself the charge and leveled all kind of allegations as to how ED is investigating uh, the entire case. He mentioned mm -hmm. as to how one of the accused who later turned approver had given 55 crores EB to, uh, to a national political party over here. And he said that he has those electoral bonds copy with him and he can produce them into the court. Uh, lawyers for Arvind Kejriwal also alleged that ED is ED officials are forcing him to give a password of a phone which Arvind Kejriwal is using but the, the okay. lawyers say that you cannot force a, uh, an individual to give password of the of the phone so very interestingly uh, uh, ED is saying that Arvind Kejriwal remained evasive in his replies and that is why he, they, they want their further custody and that is why four days custody was granted uh, ED was asking for seven days but only four days custody was granted by the court uh, now Arvind yeah. Kejriwal will have to be produced again on April 1st at 11.30 a.m. before the Rouse Avenue Court, when uh, then ED will again tell the court that as to what all they have been able to corroborate uh, during the investigation. So the ED is the maintaining here that Kejriwal has been completely evasive, again referring to him as the kingpin of the entire case. But important also what Kandu told us about the judge telling Kejriwal, you have five minutes, don't make this political. Kejriwal essentially has poked holes in the ED investigation. And I want to bring in Shreya Chatterjee on this broadcast as well. Shreya, you had Kejriwal making a pitch for the court to actually take a look at the statements that have been made by the other accused against him because his contention is that all of them were forced to make a comment against him and then were let off the hook. So he's made a case for all the accused to be brought in, for them to be questioned about their version of events and the circumstances in which they've named him. How is the ED and what's their response really to Arvind Kejriwal's detailed defence, which was largely focused on exposing the enforcement Directorate investigation, as he calls it. Um, Akshita, the conjecture that Arvind Kejriwal today made in the court about Sarat Chandra Reddy, who's the director of Aurobindo Pharma, and his right. company's 55 crore payment to the BJP, the ED suggests that that has no role to play because the BJP is not the party at the behest of the formulation of the excise policy. Those grounds do not apply. Whoever pays, whoever does not pertain to the case. That is one, what the ED rebutted. The second one, what the ED is saying is that, yes, there have been change in statements, but the reason of the change of these statements have also been well documented by us and we have presented the same before the Delhi High Court. So this is something that the ED has told in court today. It's also important to point out that while Arvind Kejriwal said in court that the 
uh, that is arrest is based on the statements of the accused turned approvers. The ED mm -hmm. earlier also during their remand it very clearly suggested that those statements are also fairly corroborated with evidences in the form of WhatsApp chats, CDRs and money trail that they have established from the South Group cartel kickbacks that allegedly went into the Goa election funding. All right. Uh, thanks, Shreya. Thanks, Kanu, for getting us all of those details. We've broken it down for you legally, what's played out in court, and also what the agencies are going to be doing going forward. Till April 1st, they have his custody. The Enforcement Directorate has maintained that we want to confront Arvind Kejriwal with some of the other accused. And these include several ARP Goa leaders also who've been called in for questioning. So there is the Enforcement Directorate referring to Arvind Kejriwal as the kingpin of the case, and Arvind Kejriwal himself, who says that this is nothing but a cooked up conspiracy to target me and to destroy the Aam Aadmi Party. So even as you've got Arvind Kejriwal and ED custody, there's been endless politics playing out in the national capital. The Aam Aadmi Party today came out to allege that the BJP is orchestrating an Operation Lotus in an attempt to destabilize their government in Delhi as well as in Punjab by enticing Aap MLAs to defect. And remember that this comment by Aap Saurabh Bharatwaj comes a day after the lone Aap MP Sushil Rinko switched sides and joined the BJP. Now, Sushil Rinko also speaking on this issue said very clearly that there was no Operation Lotus, that he was fed up with the Aam Aadmi Party and that's why he chose to switch sides. Remember, it wasn't just him. Three AAP MLAs also, uh, Jagdeep Kamboj Goldi, Amandeep Singh and Rajinder Kaur, uh, Pal Kaur had also uh, claimed that they received calls offering them to join the BJP. भारतीय जनता पार्टी आम आदमी पार्टी के सांसद विधायक कल तोड़ के ले गई और कल एक और खबर हमारे पंजाब के विधायकों ने दी कि पंजाब में बहुत सारे विधायकों के पास पार्टी बदलने के लिए भारतीय जनता पार्टी में आने के लिए उनको पैसा ऑफर किया गया उनको वाई प्लस सिक्योरिटी ऑफर की गई उनको पोजीशंस ऑफर की गई यहां तक कि उनको संसद के अंदर चुनाव लड़ाने की बात भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने कही आदरणीय श्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी दे आशीर्वाद दे नाल आदरणीय श्री अमित शाह जी दे आशीर्वाद दे नाल और साडे पंजाब भाजपा के प्रधान श्री सुनील जाखड़ जी उन्होंने दिशा निर्देश अनुसार अज भारतीय जनता पार्टी के शामिल होया सिर्फ तो सिर्फ इस करके कि जलंधर अज बहुत जरूरत है विकास की बहुत जरूरत है जलंधर केंद्र के जोड़े प्रोजेक्ट है उन्होंने बहुत जरूरत है सो अज भी अगर मैं बीजेपी ज्वाइन की है तो ये सिर्फ तो सिर्फ एको मकसद है कि असी जलंधर में एक नवा जलंधर बनाने अपना अहम रोल हिस्सा जोड़ा वह पा सके इसे परिवार का सदस्य से पर मैं कुछ गलों के आके अपने परिवार तो दूर दूर चला गया से पर जिस मैं विश्वास के नाल गया उ चीज़ नहीं है एक कंपनी लॉन्च हिंदुस्तान हुई हुई है वो कंपनी का नाम है आम आदमी पार्टी आम आदमी पार्टी कंपनी के तौर के उत्ते देश के दे काम कर रही है पर आने वाले दिनों के मैं बहुत कुछ दसागा विद प्रूफ के नाल पर यह जोड़े लोग जीवन फाहवा फैला रहे हैं मिशन लोटस दियाँ लैन देन दियाँ और तू मेरा परिवार जहाँ मैं डरने वाला नहीं पर यह मिशन लोटस है और बिल्कुल फेक है Let's get you the BJP's reaction to what played out in court with Arvind Kejriwal speaking up in Delhi's Rao Sahib New Court today. BJP Shehzad Poonawala has lashed out at Kejriwal at the Aam Aadmi Party, calling all of this nothing but political drama and attempts to create pressure on the judiciary. This comes at a time when you've been seeing the BJP and Prime Minister Modi too lashing out at the Congress, accusing the opposition of trying to demean and uh, also uh, undermine the judiciary's integrity. Let's play out for you, Shahzad comment. Aam Aadmi Party ka rajnetik charitra ye raha hai कि वो हमेशा ड्रामेबाजी और नौटंकी इस प्रकार की राजनीति तो करते ही हैं परंतु जिस तरीके से कोर्ट के पावन फ्लोर को भी अपने राजनीतिक ड्रामा और अपने राजनीतिक नौटंकी का एक अड्डा बनाने का प्रयास किया गया ये आज पूरे देश ने देखा है 
जिस प्रकार से वहां पर जुडिशरी पर दबाव डालने का प्रयास किया गया और जिस प्रकार से अनर्गल हिट एंड रन आरोप लगाए गए और ये सारे आरोप तथाकथित जो बड़े खुलासे वो करने वाले थे ये वही घिसी पिटी बातें ये वही पुरानी बातें उसी को एक प्रकार से रिपीट किया गया परंतु राजनीति का अखाड़ा बनाकर कोर्ट को इस प्रकार से भी कहा जा सकता है कि ये जो कोर्ट में हुआ वो क्योंकि उनको यही फ्रेज समझ में आएगा ओल्ड वाइन इन न्यू बॉटल प्रस्तुत करने का काम था All right, so the political war raging on in the national capital, and we'll continue getting you all those updates. On the other side of a short break, we'll be getting you all the latest from Karnataka, many states where the tickets announcements is still awaited. And in Karnataka, the Congress is facing an all-out ticket turmoil. We'll get you more on that in just a bit. election coverage with the team that wins every election from unmatched on ground reporting to real time poll updates stay tuned to the maximum channel for the maximum coverage platinum partner signature finest silver elaichi a premium product from dilbag We're at the campus of Indian Institute of Management in Ahmedabad, and with me is Chetan Bhagat. So you have a new book out, Eleven yes. Rules for Life. Eat the elephant and be the cockroach. किसी भी इंसान की आप कोई बड़ी उपलब्धि देखो, उसने कभी ना कभी हाथी खाया होगा. There is another rule called be the cockroach. That is about adaptability. Cockroach दुनिया का सबसे adaptive creature है. Multi so how do people become the cockroach? By being training yourself to be okay with change. बदलाव आ रहा है Welcome back. There's trouble for the Congress ahead of the Lok Sabha elections in Karnataka. Several leaders are speaking out of what's clearly a rebellion against the leadership, particularly over the Kolar seat, the ticket fiasco that's playing out. Now it's not just Kolar, but also in Chikpalapur, where you've got two factions of the Congress fighting it out. The top brass has now intervened. They've assured that all issues will be smoothed out before the announcement of who the ticket is being given to. The divide within Karnataka Congress escalates over Kolar and Chikkabalapur constituencies. Five MLAs and two MLCs, including a minister, on Wednesday questioned the Kolar Lok Sabha ticket being given to another minister, K. H. Muniyappa's son-in-law. This gentleman is responsible for my loss and not accepting Congress ticket. Who, who sir? Muniyappa. This is Mr. Muniyappa. So. With all the differences, with the with due respects to the high command, I I I I I agreed. I came back to the party, and party also has recognized me and made me minister. I am ever grateful to the party. Muniyappa, on his part, says he will abide by the party's decision. Deputy Chief Minister D K Shivakumar clarified that the candidate for the Kolar seat hasn't been decided yet. All all has been settled. We have not announced the candidate. All has been settled. We are going to announce within two days. 
as tensions rise in the party, Chief Minister Siddharamaya has stepped in. The Congress is also facing a backlash in Chikkabalapur constituency. Local leaders are not happy with the party's decision to field Raksha Ramayya. Meanwhile, the BJP has slammed the Congress, calling it the flag bearer of nepotism. Kolar, there is no chance at all to win for Congress party. In the last election also, Mr. K.H. Munyappa lost because of the groupism. All their uh, relatives, sons, daughters have been given ticket. There are many workers. What is their fate? This is the fate of the Congress party. If the Congress is unable to douse the fire over ticket allocation, it could affect its prospects in Karnataka, which is critical to the party's Lok Sabha mission. Bureau Report, India Today. After admitting that yes, there's a rebellion, you've got the Karnataka Congress now in firefighting mode. Chief Minister Sidra Maya and the Deputy Chief Minister DK Shivkumar have directly intervened in this matter and held a meeting with all the MLAs and MLCs who were against KH Muniappa, who's the Food and Civil Supplies Minister in Karnataka, his son-in-law getting the ticket. They've held a meeting with them and in all likelihood, it's going to be a neutral candidate who's picked by the Congress High Command. Let me bring in Sagar Rajo on this broadcast. Sagai, all's well that ends well essentially for the Congress, or at least that's what the top brass is saying, that they've kind of quelled this crisis for now. Sure. Absolutely. All this uh, 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 dissident MLAs and minister had met the Deputy Chief Minister as well as Chief Minister in uh, Chief Minister's residence. And when they stepped out, they said that they will abide by whatever the decision will be taken by AICC and whoever the candidature which will be decided by AICC. And they also said that they have already escalated their grievance with the Chief Minister and Deputy Chief Minister and they have also assured to address all those issues and so we need to wait and watch how it is going to turn around as uh, the candidates will be announced very shortly uh, by the congress and they believe that it might be announced tomorrow and uh, whoever the candidates will be from kolar they are going to support when we also asked them whether uh, chikapadana was the son-in-law of kate muniappa has been announced as a candidate from kolar will they support and work for him they said that they haven't discussed about the candidates but still if you try to join the dots it is quite clear that they were happy and they have escalated the issue so we need to wait and watch the ball is in the AICC whether AICC will go ahead and address the issues of Kolar or will they go ahead and announce the candidature of Chikapadana. Let's see what plays out hopefully in the next few days we will have answers to all of those questions that you raised. Thanks very much Sagai for joining us with those details. Nominations have been filed. It's one of the big contests everyone's watching out for in phase one of the elections. I'm talking about the Coimbatore seat in Tamil Nadu. But the politics continues as campaigning is picking up. The AIA DMK is now questioning Anna Malai, the BJP Tamil Nadu poster boy who's fighting from Coimbatore. They've said that his nomination is invalid and thereby have said that he cannot contest in this particular election. Let's get you some of the reactions that have come in from the AIA AGMK where they explain why exactly they're saying that Anna Malai's nomination is invalid. The nomination papers filed by Anna Malai has blatant errors. He has customized the own affidavit format he has not followed the format prescribed by the Election Commission of India. Instead of sticking the 200 rupees non-judicial stamp, he has stuck a court fee stamp. This blatant errors are brought to the notice of RO by AADMK and we are awaiting actions on the same. But DMK remains a mute spectator. Clearly shows the behind doors alliance between DMK and BJP. 
அண்ணாமலை வந்து ரெண்டு நாமினேஷன் ஃபைல் பண்ணியிருந்தார் சீரியல் நம்பர் பதினேழு சீரியல் நம்பர் இருபத்தி ஏழு ரெண்டு நாமினேஷன் ஃபைல் பண்ணியிருந்தார் அதில் சீரியல் நம்பர் பதினேழு பார்ட் த்ரீயில் கையெழுத்து போட முட்டிருந்தாங்க அது ரிஜெக்ட் ஆகிடுச்சு சீரியல் நம்பர் பதினேழில் அஃபிடேவிட் தாக்கல் பண்ணியிருந்தார் அந்த அஃபிடேவிட் வந்து அவர் சொந்த ஃபார்மேட்டில் தயாரித்து போட்டிருக்காரு எலெக்ஷன் கமிஷன் ஆஃப் இந்தியா என்ன சொல்லுதுன்னா எப்பெல்லாம் ஒரு ஒரு வேட்பாளருடைய வேட்புமனு ரிஜெக்ட் பண்ணலான்னு சொல்லி ஒரு இது சொல்லியிருக்காங்க ரூல் நம்பர் ஃபோர் பாயிண்ட் ஃபைவ்ல ஃபோர்டீனில் தெளிவாக சொல்லியிருக்காங்க எலெக்ஷன் கமிஷனுடைய ப்ரிஸ்கேப்டு ஃபார்மேட்டில் அஃபிடேவிட் இல்லைன்னு சொல்லி சொன்னால் கண்டிப்பாக அது ரிஜெக்ட் பண்ணணும்னு சொல்லி சொல்லியிருக்கு அப்படி இருக்கிற சூழ்நிலையில் அண்ணாமலையோடைய ரெண்டாவது அப்ளிகேஷன் சீரியல் நம்பர் இருபத்தேழில் அவர் தாக்கல் பண்ணியிருக்கிற அஃபிடேவிட்டில் பார்ட் ஃபைவ் குற்ற வழக்குகள் குறித்த காலமில் எலெக்ஷன் கமிஷன் என்ன ஃபார்மேட்டில் அஃபிடேவிட் கொடுத்துருக்காங்களோ அந்த அஃபிடேவ் அந்த ஃபார்மேட்டில் அவங்க அஃபிடேவிட் போடலை அவங்க சொந்தமாக எலெக்ஷன் கமிஷன் ஆஃப் இந்தியா பிஜேபியோடைய கைக்கூலிங்கிறதுனால இவங்க சொந்தமாக ஒரு ஃபார்மேட் கிரியேட் பண்ணி போட்டிருக்காங்க பாவம் சுயேட்சை வேட்பாளர்களாக இதே மாதிரி சின்ன சின்ன தவறு நடந்ததுக்கு அவங்களோட சுயேட்சை வேட்பாளருடைய நாமினேஷனில் ரிஜெக்ட் ஆகிருக்கு அத்தனை வேட்பாளர்களும் சுயேட்சை வேட்பாளர்கள் அதிமுக சார்பாக அதை அப்ஜெக்ஷன் சொன்னதுக்கப்புறம் கூட ஆர்வோ வந்து அதை கன்சிடர் பண்ணாமல் அந்த நாமினேஷன் அக்செப்ட் பண்ணிட்டேன்னு சொல்லிட்டு போயிட்டார் இதில் என்ன பியூ Okay, so you've got an all-out fight playing out. The AIA DMK there suggesting that Annamalai had filed two nomination papers. The first one was rejected because the signature was missing. In the second one too, they are claiming that there are clear issues with the stamp paper and that's why it should be deemed invalid. We'll see how that plays out. But let's get you a sense of what is the fight right now that's playing out in Coimbatore. It's not going to be a walk in the park for Annamalai. This is a three-way fight that we're going to be witnessing. And Shilpa Nair from Ground Zero gets you this report. A three-way battle for Coimbatore as Bharatiya Janata Party's Tamil Nadu poster boy Anna Malai squares off against AIDMK's Singai Ramachandran and Dravidamu Netra Karagam's Ganapati Rajkumar. Though the arithmetic may say otherwise, but Anna Malai fancies his chances from Coimbatore. He also claims that 2024 election results would prove that the political ground in the southern state has started to shift toward the Bharatiya Janata Party. In Coimbatore, for the last 10 years, I've seen the kind of MPs it has. And they're very clear when Modi ji is in power for the third straight time, they want a national democratic alliance, Bharatiya Janata Party's MP here, so that every project can be fast-tracked. Uh, what does Coimbatore mean to you personally and politically? Coimbatore means to me personally because I... I I got my life here I got an identity here importantly I got my wife here <laughs> and uh, politically it's a very important uh, area for our BJP a lot of people have sacrificed their lives here the party is grown by sacrificing our blood not with sweat a historic performance in Coimbatore and across Tamil Nadu his opponents here in the constituency say that the BJP is not even in the picture the real competition is between the DMK and the ADMK both the Dravidian parties also claim that for the BJP it's not going to be historic performance but historic failure and they also accuse the national party of fighting the elections only on social media platform <laughs> it is not a three corner fight it is a two corner fight it is between aidmk and dmk we are not fighting with the party which is fighting only in social media without any booth agents we are fighting dmk Fight, lot of uh, aggression from all sides. How, how confident? 
we are hundred percent confident that we will win mm. this election. And uh, what that is, we are fighting the election by what the CM has done for the state and for the people. Uh, the BJP says this time around there will be historic performance in uh, Coimbatore. Uh, they have fielded their uh, BJP state president here. Do you think the BJP has any chances this time? The BJP around? will be historically routed from Tamil Nadu. Candidates in Coimbatore are exuding confidence and they say victory will be theirs. But what is the reality? What are the people of Coimbatore thinking? Let's speak to them and understand what is the mood on the ground. AMK or uh, in Coimbatore or BJP will come. Uh, Anamalai ji. Uh, why do you think Anamalai ji? Uh, he is educated. He is a service person. He is better than other.